if you told the version of me that thought that was cool back then, that like, oh, is the, you the a Maroon 5 fan? I would have been like, no. <laughs> Good up. Yeah. I'm an edgelord. Yeah. <laughs> This video is brought to you by Backblaze. We'll hear more about them later. But for now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to local music and not so local music and the people that make it, including my guest. And my guest today is another DI Records artist. DI Records is Philadelphia record base that our record label that's been so kind, has given me so much content. Thank you very much, to Dakota, who uh, owns it. Um, this gentleman is Frontman, or yeah, frontman, and a bass player for a New England death metal band with multiple influences. Their latest single, Hate Powered Automation, is out now, and I have a review coming, which will be coming out later this week. So definitely subscribe, ring the bell, you know the drill, and uh, that's going to be a, a good one. Please welcome to the channel, Dustin Black. Hey, Dustin. Hello, Internet, and hi, Josh. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. No worries. And um, thank you again for. Uh, we, we had a few technical difficulties off camera and we got it, you know, yay. So <laughs> if this looks a little different than my normal virtual interviews, you know why. Hopefully better. We made it work. We made it work by hook or by crook. So <laughs> first things first, you are not the only band named Vanta Black. I hope you know that. Uh, uh, I like, In, in your genre, that. in the death metal genre, it, yes. it, it, as soon as death metal heard about Vanta Black, they're like, that's perfect. It's the darkest it can possibly be. So, <laughs> so here's the funny thing. I started Vanta Black as a solo project in 2016 when that was still a fresh and novel idea. Right. And then it fell by the wayside, which gave a bunch of other bands the opportunity to name themselves Vanta Black. But then I dug up its fucking corpse like a year ago. So nice. now wear the old hat. Like, we've had Vanta Black on lock since 2016, but it is what it is. Right. Uh, I'm just happy no one's coming at us, like, legally, because I'm sure someone else is smarter and copyrighted it. But here we are. Yes. You should definitely investigate that. Yes. Yes. Um, it's, what's funny is I had a promoter from New York hit me up uh, a couple of years ago saying, like, hey, there's two Vanta Blacks out here. You should play out here, and we'll do a show where you're all just named Vanta Black, and it's like, oh brother, <laughs> oh brother, what could possibly go wrong? Yeah, uh, yeah, right. Oh, God, that's but, on the one hand, I can see his point, but on the other hand, no. Uh, yeah, I like the effort. I thought it was funny. I thought it was really funny. Yeah, that is a a hump we haven't cleared yet, but it's smooth sailing so far. Yeah, good good luck. Um, so. I wanted to ask, you mentioned the Vanta Black 2016, but you've, you've done stuff before then. You've been doing music for quite a while, right? Yes, uh, for about you know, like 12 or 13 years, since middle of high school. All right, then I'm going to ask a question that OG Room Sixers know very well. Let's talk earliest musical influence. And by that, I mean, what is that moment you remember saying, I want to do that? Interesting. Um, I would have to say a band called The Fall of Troy was... Ooh, that's a cut was one of the first bands because I was in high school and there was this group of kids that like were way better than they should have been musically. Like we were in like freshman, sophomore year and these kids were already out playing gigs at like local venues and like putting out an album and this is the bands that they all listen to. So wanting to get where they were coming from i checked them out and it blew my fucking mind and it's still like i actually just uh last week went through their whole discography again to see if it still holds up and it's one of those bands where it's like yep yep this is stuck with me nice so i'd have to say the fall of troy when i was like a teenager and then i heard cannibal corpse as an adult which made me <laughs> take the the hard death metal like pivot from there i was gonna say it's a bit of a leap from yes one of yes. the ones to the other yeah Right on. I heard blast beats and sick riffs for the first time, and it changed my DNA from that point. Yeah, um, that that and 
feeling blast beats live at a show for the first time. Yes. Will yes. be one of those moments like what the what happened? What was that? Yeah. Yeah, like, right how do I replicate that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there a fax machine? Like <laughs> nice. Um by the way, if you are interested in being featured on room six, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using my email address down in the description or click the room six social media link. That's where you'll find all sorts of places that I'm at online and also all sorts of ways to support the channel, including some merch. And uh, unfortunately, the mug does not come with Room 6 Whiskey. <laughs> but also, um, you can find ways that you can contact me. But uh, yeah, thanks. Oh, and of course, subscribe and, you know, all the, you know, all that stuff. So, Mr. Black, um, is, is, Dust, is Dustin Black your actual birth name? It is not. Okay. So, um, I don't. We don't need to go into it. We don't need to. Dispel. I wish I was that cool. I wish I was that fucking cool. Hey. But that's a uh, that's a smoke screen. I mean, we we have we have someone out here. Um, and she's amazing front person and uh, front woman. She's amazing front woman for both a uh, cover band that that's a, that's their day job and they they do it very well, and front person for a um, pop punk uh, band as well her name is roxy gun with two ends i'm like you have the best name and it's her birthday yeah, that that's her birth name yeah that's bullshit not not like you're nope. not like you're faking like people get to be named that yeah just like legit i, I had okay my first band picture this sicily 1912 anyway <laughs> <laughs> golden girls anybody i had my first band i'm 22 they're all like 18 okay okay and i'm the singer that's all i'm doing in this band is singing and the this band of high schoolers who had come from band to this, like the trumpet player was now the electric guitar player kind of thing. You know, right. they, they went from high school band to this. Uh, they had some of the best names. On, on guitar, you have John Paul Reed. On, on bass, you have Nate Young. It's just like, just like, it's good stage names, you know? And John? John Paul Reed sounds like if like Marvel made a guy who was in high school band. Like <laughs> exactly, he's he's like the extra member of, of Led Zeppelin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I and I, it was me, Joshua Court, right? And I'm like, eh. And I went through a whole period where I was I, like stage name, stage name. Back when I wanted to be like, you know, a a, a proper musician, and uh, didn't do all this. Um, and I, I I the best I could come up with was just Joshua, which is lame. But uh, more than one musician who was in, like, who would end up in my band playing my music was like, I like your name. It's the only, you're the only right. It has, like, it hits those syllables. Well, it sounds it does. good. Now it does. In the 90s? <laughs> Not so yeah. much. And also, this was before Josh Groban and a whole bunch of other Josh's, Joshua's came out. Mm. Like, I, I, I and I, I missed my opportunity to, uh, to, to market, corner that market. So, but I digress. Um, um, what? I was gonna say, um, it's funny the V that we mentioned was initially because at the time when I was getting into writing death metal music, I lived in South Carolina, and uh -huh. I was also just kind of like posting memes and shit on Facebook. And I lived in like a very like I worked for like a very like ritzy like marina company, and I didn't want my boss to be able to find me on social media so i thought <laughs> what's the best way to do that than to change the second letter of my name so if you type in du poof i'm gone but dv then i'd have to tell you that and then you could find me and that has stuck with me for so long right. and it has gone from like privacy measure to stage name at this point you, and i've kind of realize... rolled with it you realize at some point the privacy is going to be outweighed. Like all of a sudden he's going to be like, gee, Dustin Black. I know Dustin. I know Dustin. Yeah. Black. Yeah. I didn't think that far. <laughs> uh, no worries. I honestly, my first thought when I see it is terrible it is Maroon 5 because they have the V That's on, so on fucking that one funny. album. <laughs> if you told the version of me that thought that was cool back then, that like, oh, was the, it, you the a Maroon 5 fan? I would have <laughs> been like, no. <laughs> Good up. Yeah, <laughs> I'm an edge lord. <laughs> yeah, so um, I wanted to ask kind of a weird 
question, but would you say that Vanta Black, okay, the the sound Vanta Black, mm-hmm. is an amalgamation of Fathom Farewell, Sun Singer, and the Final Riot? So, yes and no in weird ways. Um, I mean, we do we do tend to take whatever our past, you know, our influences and and what we've done in the past. It can't help but work its way into our new work, but. I was just wondering, I haven't listened to the music from the other three acts, so I was wondering if somehow some of that like Vanta Black was just kind of an amalgamation of that or is it, is it its own separate entity? So it's kind of been reverse engineered because in every band I've been in, mm-hmm. I pitch songs and you could distinctly tell by listening from the rest of the discography which are ones that I've pitched. And it would usually end up being, like, a very defined, like, what is this song doing here? And how that would happen is I would be like, hey, guys, I wrote this song for whenever, like, Vanta is a band again. If you guys just want to give me critique. And then they would be like, we can just use that. So, like, I've kind of just been bulldozing my way through these bands with Vanta songs, essentially, that, like, don't make sense with the rest of the band's discography. Until I eventually landed on just Vanta Black again. So I wouldn't say I've necessarily brought things from like say Sunsinger or Fathom into Vanta, but I was drip feeding Vanta riffs into those bands before we got to where we're at now, if that makes sense. Totally. Um this Fant- Vanta Black is your like finally I get to do all the stuff I want to do without compromising on the other songs yes yes yeah. exactly been there done that totally understand um it's the dustin black band <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the guys have been pitching amazing shit that i would never think of though which i'm which is one of the reasons why it's so exciting for me yeah yeah there is you can really tell when someone records everything themselves and writes everything themselves because everything starts sounding a little bit the same Samey. Yeah, yeah, same. Here. Where, when you have other people involved in the process, even if it's still ninety percent you, if you have other people who are like, "Well, here's what I got. What do you got, bassist? Or here's what I got. What do you got, drummer?" Yes, You're, you can't help but you know it. It modulates both uh, both parts of it. To, and uh, I've I've come to realize that like one of the most important things that you could do when you're in a band and you write songs is understanding that the same way you play bass or you play guitar, you have to have the faith that your drummer plays drums better than you do, your guitarist plays and writes better parts than you do for their instrument, and you, I think it's totally fair and fine to, like, pitch, like, concepts, because, like, I write sheet music for everything, but then the guys will transform, will move whole sections around, they'll write crazy leads, they'll move the whole like where the snare is and like it ends up it starts as my idea not always but it'll usually start as my idea and then completely transform into an amalgamation of just educated opinion and it's nice to have that and that's why i'm so i feel like i'm in my first band like being 30 now it's really exciting nice um before we get into the next question I wanted to take a quick moment here to say happy holidays to everybody. At, at t- time of recording, we're about, oh, 11 days from uh, Christmas. And uh, when this posts, it's going to be two days before Christmas. Regardless of the holiday, we just finished Hanukkah. Uh, Kwanzaa is, is coming up, I believe. And regardless of what you you how, how you celebrate the holidays, whether it's just getting together with friends and family and, and maybe opening presents having too much food that kind of thing mm-hmm. yeah that's or, gotta be me or whether you're you're tired you're you're all bought in on the whole thing happy holidays i hope that everyone is, is safe and healthy and happy and i want to thank all of you for you know watching number one but also for um all the subscribers all the comments all the interactions all the people who have enjoyed what i've been doing for the last four and a half years um on the 30th okay the last saturday of the month uh at noon pacific daylight time i will be posting my 2023 gag reel and it's going to be it's literally just funny snippet out of every single interview 
this one included, no pressure. And uh, <laughs> I just, it's basically my way of saying, look at all the fun I had. It was amazing. But um, yeah, so. That's exciting. Back to you. Yeah, no worries. Just planting little seeds, you know. So um, Scott Pilgrim equals playing bass. Uh, I'd say so. That was one of the first things that, uh, I know. Yeah, that's a coincidence. Or, yeah, you do your research. Um, that's funny. Uh, yeah, when I was like 13, I saw the Scott Pilgrim movie. And at the same time, someone my sister was dating gave me a bass guitar that had been left outside in the snow and rain for two Ooh. days. Well, and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's that's just those two things just sparking together. Right. And I picked the quietest instrument in the mix to just full send into. And it's been cool. Like, I don't regret that one bit. I was a drummer for a little while um, when I was, like, a teenager. But then, like, you living in apartments as kids, that doesn't really doesn't really work. So, like, I got this shitty, busted, horrible bass that I didn't know that that wasn't what they were all supposed to be like. And just learned it all fucking wrong for, like, five years. And then spent the next ten years unfucking that. But, yeah, no, that's the stupid Scott Pilgrim movie. I say stupid like I don't love it. But that Scott Pilgrim movie was, like, that was day one for, like, this shit kind of kicks ass, actually. Like, <laughs> we are sex bomb. Uh, it's it taking going back to my that first band that I sang in. Yeah, yeah, we would rehearse in a room. First of all, shout out to dr any parents of drummers that let them rehearse yeah, seriously, in the house. fucking seriously. Not even in the clock in the garage in the house in a room. We had four amps, one in each corner, and I was singing through a ba a bass amp. A cheesy, a cheesy, yeah. crappy bass amp, and I learned to listen really, and to, like, because I was studying voice at the time as well. So I was like, okay, how does it feel when I'm singing the way I want this to sing? So I would right. pay attention when I was. Uh, here's a tip, new new musicians. I've said it before on this channel. Practice at home. Rehearsal yeah. is not for you to figure yes. out. Yes, yes. Practice is the bedroom. Rehearsal is when you're with the band. Yes. The only flips. The only caveat to that is as the songwriter. I would sit in the corner while they would jam on something and write lyrics. But then I would go mm -hmm. home and figure it out because, you know, I got instruments and I would figure it out and I would figure out, okay, this is what I want to sound like. How does it feel? Because I can't hear anything right, <laughs> in, in right, that room. Right. So, um, yeah. And that was before earplugs were like part of my daily thing or, you know, yeah. I, 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 I yeah. You know, what's interesting too, is that we've kind of hit like, this new age that kind of started with like the like millennial group um, of how songwriting is approached because now everyone oh, yeah. has like interfaces. Uh, a lot of people know how to work a program like Guitar Pro. So like a lot of songs get written by one guy at like staying up until four in the morning. Like there's not a lot of like jamming stuff out in the room anymore. Like I'm sure there are still bands that swear by that. Right. And that's still totally valid. But like I'm on the fence because on the one hand, it's rock and roll. You should it, sh it should be sweaty. You should be like, you know, in the room together. In the yeah, in yeah, the yeah. mix. But thanks to COVID and quarantine, there it wasn't an option if you wanted right. to be se at all semi responsible. Um and so people immediately got very good at this at, at yeah. Zoom and you know, like you and I could there's no lag, really. You and I could write a song right now. Yeah, we and, could. And, and, and it wouldn't be like, you know, record quality, broadcast quality, but we could do a, a scratch the, demo. The guts would be there. Yeah, and exactly. Like, that's possible now. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, I'm 51. So you're 30. Even for you, 10 years ago, we would never have thought. No. This was, yeah, no, no, no. Not without like, oh, you got to spend a ton of money on, you know, PreSonus and all this other stuff. So and it's like, no, you really don't. Like, no. I was hashing out demos uh, this week, and I'm looking at a uh, eighty dollar focus right, um, yeah, and a, a digital audio workspace I acquired completely legally. 
<laughs> hey, I used to work in a pawn shop. Trust me, yeah. <laughs> some of this stuff I got completely legally, but I got yeah. it very cheap. Um, so we're going to take a quick moment here to, take, to hear a message from Future Josh, which is really just my cheesy way of throwing to a sponsor spot. But if it interests you, please consider clicking the link down in the uh, description. You'll save money. I'll get money. Win-win, baby. But uh, also, I'm getting a little low, so I think we're going to have a quick booze break. And uh, yeah, booze break. And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. Making YouTube videos can be a little resource-intensive. It seems like hardly a week goes by that I don't have my computer yelling at me about running out of space. Fortunately, I've got Backblaze. Whether you need to free up space on your hard drive or want to be able to retrieve something while on the go, Backblaze offers peace of mind for just $7 a month. They offer unlimited computer backups, which you can have access to anywhere with an internet connection. That's safe and encrypted. You can even restore old versions of files from up to 30 days ago. Just for watching this video and for being part of Room 6, and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get a 15-day free trial. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to Backblaze for being a sponsor, and let's get back to the show. We're back. Hope you enjoyed that sponsor spot. I uh, don't know what it was for. Hope it was good. <laughs> so stick around because we're going to be seeing um, kind of a, a visualizer type video for that song, Hate Powered Automation, that I've done a review of. Um, and uh, yeah, getting back to the interview, which do you think you'll, which one ha ended up happening? Did you go hiking this fall or did you eat drywall? Bit of this, bit of that. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing I, uh, what you can find when you go through someone's feed no kidding it's funny because like you say these things mm -hmm. and it takes me a second you're saying my own shit back to me and it's making me go what the hell is he talking about <laughs> that's <laughs> right baby yeah, it's, uh, it's me it's <laughs> I have um, been called the next Nardwar <laughs> uh, that's honestly what I was starting to think like yeah no, no that's there that's real um but did no, you do a lot I, of hiking? I unfortunately didn't really get to because, like, I'm like a hardcore like fitness guy. That's like, I have two things: I have fitness and I have music. Those are my two passions. Right. So, like, when I say like, I did go on like a couple of hikes, but like when I say that, I mean like I want to go get lost in the fucking mountains. And yeah. like a lot of people are just like, I found a nice little like trail loop that's like 15 yeah. minutes, and it's like. I feel like when I do shit like that, I'm like a husky who's been left in an apartment and <laughs> is starting to, you know, eat the furniture. Yeah. But to answer your question, yeah, I, I did. And um, one of the best memories I have of being in Fathom Farewell is that we've done some touring and we went out to New York City and we stopped in New Hampshire for a bit. Because our vocalist of that band has like a whole career being an acoustic guitar guy. So we uh, essentially did like a layover so he could play a gig. And it was literally in like the middle of like the New Hampshire forest at like a cidery. And honestly, just being able to walk around that has carried any fall, whatever. Like I'm good for like three years after that. That shit was amazing. Right on. I uh, only got a couple more questions here, and then we'll check out uh, Hate Powered automa Automation. Um, let's talk, since you've been doing just music for a while, the Vanta Black itself has kind of been resurrected back in, no wait, it was, it, was, it was a thing in 2016. When did you resurrect Vanta Black? So the way that actually happened was the rest of the guys in Vanta were talking about like they were already meeting up because they wanted to do death metal and these were three guys i had rapport with like james the vocalist was the guitarist of sunsinger and before that was the guitarist of vanta black in 2016 so like ah. me and james go back damn near a decade and i knew the other two guys as well so they completely aside from me 
were already getting together, jamming, like had aspirations of being like a death metal band. And they wanted me to play bass for them. So I had this harebrained idea and I met up with them over a couple of beers. And I was like, hey, you guys have already established you want to do this death metal thing. I have like two albums of shit written that we could populate just an initial like live set list with. We could just take the best of what you guys like. Boom. We have a live set ready to go. Already sheet musicked out. I have the branding. I have history. And uh, I know you guys. So like I know you guys have already been doing your own thing. But if we want to just amalgamate this into Vantablack, we can hit the ground running, like, hard. And they went for it. And I've been lucky enough to that I was the last guy in the group. And I was lucky enough that they took to my idea and have just been, like, full send into it. Very much so. That's awesome. I thought you were the singer as well. And it's rare that the creators, the, the kind of the... the the main thrust of the band is not the front man, the, the singer, you know? Yeah. It's, so, um, good on you. Thank you. And they've been like, the rest of the guys are fucking amazing. Uh, we all do our own jobs that only that person is capable of. And I think that's why we've kind of hit our, right. hit our stride a bit here. I was going to say earlier when you were talking about how like the drummer's probably a better drummer than you are and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Um, sting, you know, sting, yeah. It's so nice you know, to hear that. I've been interviewing some really young bands lately and they're like, who? The police? Who? Yeah. And it, and it hurts. <laughs> it burns. <laughs> but uh, um, Sting may, once said he made a career out of surrounding himself with musicians better than him. And I was like, yes. Yes. Right? Which is a tall task because the man, every time, every time I ever hear or see him uh, on TV or whatever, I'm immediately like, why am I not practicing? Why yeah. am I not learning something right now? So I wanted to ask, what's your favorite show memory of performing uh, either as Vance Black or one of the other acts? What do you got that's just like off the rails or or you checked off a bunch of rock star wish list things? What is it that you pull out at a party and, and say, you're not going to believe this? So if I had to say like an all timer, like uh, all time, like the coolest gig I've ever played was I played downstairs Palladium with Fathom Farewell. Wow. Which was, uh, we got to open for Seven Dust, uh, just direct support right before them. And it was a crowd of, I know it was like a four digit crowd, like lower four digits. Holy crap. And that was also the first place I saw like live music, like as a kid, was seeing them on this gigantic stage. And that was always like a big bucket list. Like I, want to be up there and this is when i was a kid before i even knew anything about what i wanted to do musically i was just like that so getting to live that out was like i've been chasing that fucking dragon since but with vanta specifically when it was a band initially in 2016 we survived long enough to play one incredibly sloppy shit show um <laughs> and then and they're done that <laughs> yeah and we all got we were all so nervous we all just got a little too drunk and like the crowd loved it the crowd knew no different but um then i immediately moved out of that practice space so when that happened the thing just kind of fell apart so when Vanta came back this year in uh, June, I booked our comeback show at that same venue as kind of a do-over. And it was like a nice, like, picking up where we left off, but, like, now we're all 30 and have industry experience and aren't just, like, dumb fuck 22-year-olds this time. Like, and yeah. we didn't drink all the beer this time. <laughs> You know the stand-up comedian Kyle Kinane? Yes. You're 22. You're supposed to be an asshole. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, God. That's so accurate. And it's it like, is. Something that I've experienced with this band for the first time is, like, I don't drink that much anymore these days, like, these days now. But, like, before when I was playing in these bands, 
I would always like treat it like a party. I would walk in, I would immediately get a shot and a drink. Yep. First thing. And going forward with Vanta now, I'm like, no, I want to make sure I'm playing this right. I want to be giving the best possible pro. And it's like, oh, I give a shit. Yeah. I can still give a shit at the age of 30. Like, <laughs> I didn't know it was possible. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, I, when I was singing four hour cover shows, I Damn. I would I would like I would nurse a drink, shots would get bought for the band, and only once ever, I mean to we we did it for seven years. Uh, or rather I, I did it for seven years and the lead guitarist did it for seven years. The rest of the band changed faces many times. That's why I the best name I ever came up with it was called Revolving Door. So that's appropriate. Sick. That's actually bad. That's kick ass though. But it literally yeah. was who's playing bass this this gig, you know? Yeah. And uh yeah. we started a seven as a seven member band with a, a female singer, and I was singing as well, and then eventually got down to four piece. <laughs> Just got two yeah. like it was really I I had to be a rehearsal Nazi. I hate to say it, but I had to be like, guys, we have a show tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We kind of yeah. need to figure out the you know, what are we doing? I know it's all covers, and we all know the songs, but It'd be nice if we kind of like ran through the stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah, like bare minimum. Yeah. Because like I've done the hired gun thing and like I actually have a few gigs like coming up where I'm just like my whole thing is just show up. I'm meeting the guys on stage and no, it's just like, no. but like that's not ideal. You know what I mean? Like you do. You like, at least got to get like, together once to do the tops and tails or the ins and outs. Yeah, like transition stuff like, or and like you kind of need that to even just like build rapport, right, with the people you're playing with, so well, you're not a bunch of fucking strangers on stage. Yeah, see what you're getting, you know. Yeah. Well, hey, like, break a leg. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's gonna be interesting. I'm excited. Nice. I'm excited. Right on. Um, so from there, I'm gonna uh, move over to a couple more questions, and then we're gonna get to hate powered automation, and then we'll uh, have the outro. So. What is the big, what's 2024 got in store that you want to like let people know about? Oh, um, so we are currently recording a second single. Um, we just sent over guitar stems for that. It's going to be much heavier and much more dissonant than Hate Powered Automation. We kind of got that one out of the door because it has a traditional song structure. It has some, it has like a hook, it has a bridge, a chorus. Like the rest of the shit is not like that. It is just, what ugly fucking noises can we make these instruments make? Okay, <laughs> now play them in time with the drums. And, like, that's kind of the vibe going forward. Right. So, 2024, we have, get like, one single guaranteed to be coming out. And we hope to nail down, like, three more. We're probably going to spend 2024 just pumping out singles. Not going to do an extended release yet, just because that's the ADHD age of streaming that we live in. Right. With Whenever you release something, you get five minutes of people's times. And it's up to you whether you stretch an album into ten releases and you get that five minutes ten times, or you drop it all at once and you get five minutes on your fucking life's work on your album so while we're rolling while we're getting going we're probably going to be sticking to singles for now we'll be doing right. an ep probably 2025 and um for now we really want to get the fuck out of uh new england like we love it here <laughs> we have seven gigs lined up here but like i learned playing in fathom which is toured that like the best shows you'll ever fucking play are out of your backyard like that's when the magic happens that's when you make those real connections it's not just homies doing you favors by showing up like people go nuts on, like in other places so it's like yeah try vegas as soon as you leave vegas suddenly you're coming home up money you're coming home with like oh that's every so crazy yeah but vegas vegas is so oversaturated for local music you would think okay it's covers 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 you know tribute bands whatever but the local scene too is uh you're i'm seeing the same acts in many many places which is great for them good for them but i know for any act that go, that that leaves town even if it's just like going to from vegas to lake Havasu, like like we're okay we're gonna 
we're we're making a couple tour. We're going to the next state over, kind of thing. Right. They're they're getting all sorts of comps, and they're getting they're they're getting their money's worth. But more importantly, they are they're live streaming their shows in these other places. Yep. They are their merch sales through the roof because, I mean, you you've seen this. Any band that's out of town that comes to play a show, they leave it on the stage. They leave it all on the stage. They yep. have the most merch and the best merch at the show, generally. And like they know we got this one shot to capture your attention and yes. make new fans. Yes. And, and yeah, I it's one of my great regrets is I never got to do the touring thing. I um it just never happened. Every time I started getting traction with a, a, a band or lineup or whatever, something would happen. And and as like it does, yeah. Yeah, as it, revolving door. Hey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um I had a, a, a indie rock band called The Suspense, five iterations. And after the last time a band broke up, I was like, I'm, I'm kind of done for now. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, take a hiatus and raise my kid, who at the time was four, and now they're fifteen, going on thirty. And, uh, it just the the allure, that whole romantic romantic part of loading gear at two in the morning, isn't there yeah. anymore? You know. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. I still, I, as it is, I sometimes I'm loading gear at eleven or midnight, but that's you know, YouTube gear. I'm not carting amps anymore. Uh, yeah, and it's tough because like now we're kind of at that age where um, mm -hmm. like your job matters, like you have bills. Like oh yeah, when I was like when I was 22 in that first iteration, I lived in a punk house. Like mm -hmm. the. The house was listed as a venue on bands in town. Like wow. that's the kind of like, and my bedroom was in that spot, and it was like three hundred dollars a month in rent split between like seven people. So like, it didn't matter if I called out of work because I had a gig. Like, but now as I'm thirty, I have to worry about like the fucking power bill. So like, you kind of get those spots where it's like it's a little less like. It's mm -hmm. harder to romanticize, like you said. It's harder to romanticize the two a.m. loadout when you have to open a restaurant at it's six, 6 a.m. Yeah, the next exactly. Day. Yeah. Or right. even if, even if, like, like my my work day starts whenever I get done dropping my kid off from school. So I get up at six thirty right. Monday through Friday. Not for me. <laughs> I got to get the kid to school, and then right. I'm like, well, I'm up already. I might as well go to work. Mm -hmm. You know. And I feel like this is kind of like at this. Once you hit like this age range, I feel like that's when you kind of see a lot of people hit the turning point and it starts to cull like a lot of people. And like that's it respectable. Does. And I, I can't even blame them. Like a lot of people have this, like they love music, but they still have like this very traditional, like I want a family. I want, right. like, and that's totally, that's what a sane person wants. And this is kind of yeah. when, like, it starts to cut to, like, oh, you're still doing that band thing. And it's like, you bet you're fucking at I'm all in. <laughs> yeah, that's, <right>. that's my <laughs> therapy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, part of what I do with Room 6 is, like, I, if you if I'm standing in here, I'm reading a script. I'm doing a review video or, or something. What I, the, the payoff for me is going to a show and doing a review of the show because then everybody's happy to see me. A lot of the oh, venues, yeah. a lot of the venues in town know me now, so I'm just like green room, no problem. That's uh, awesome. It, yeah, it is awesome. It's it's become a thing. Hey, um, but I also live stream. Like uh, uh, I work with a couple people who have put on songwriter showcases, so it's like local original talent doing original music for three hours, and I live stream it. So that's three. That's boom. That's instant content. You know. And mm -hmm. I, I love that. As soon as I hit stop streaming, it's baked in. There's content. It's already done and gone. I don't have to edit nothing. I love it. But also, it's so rewarding to me to see just the 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 growth of a lot of these people. But what back to what you were saying with the age thing, it seems like people go one of three ways. Either one, they just quit because life gets right. in the way. Yep. They allow life to get in the way. Two. They, um, they 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 pivot into okay. Well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to at least make money. I'm going to be you know a cover band or something. Yeah. It sound sound like where I live, or or three, they're the guys that just never really left their decade. You know, they they just keep holding yeah. on, yeah. and they keep especially in metal. 
you, you yep. you've seen it yep. the guys yep. who are just like hey buddy you know it's okay to cut your hair it's okay to <laughs> like move it's okay to evolve your sound yeah. it's okay to you know to to want to you know security <laughs> and, yeah and, you right. know to to, to you know it, it, you are you didn't put in the work when you were younger just like i didn't you know like i i wish that i had i wish i had the drive when i put out my 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 i have two albums like when i put them out i was already in my 30s i wish i had the drive to like sleep in my car and do whatever it took you know mm -hmm. when i was younger but at that point i was scared and i was figuring out my life and things like that and now i'm happy you have any idea how hard it is to write music when you're happy <laughs> yes yes i do let me tell you i wrote so much of the vanta material in a like two-year pissed off stretch sitting in the dark and, like, all dressed in black yeah and like i yep. think i wrote like 30 songs in like two years and i've written like five or six since like <laughs> like i totally yep. fucking get it Learn the lesson, kids. Stay miserable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, we got one more question. One more question. Yeah, you made course. it. Yay. Then we're going to see hate powered automation. Uh, the, the, the virtualization, I guess we're calling it. So circling back, and this is another question I ask all my prey. So OG <laughs> room sixers. Thanks for sticking right, in let's, this. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Okay. Oh. Let's pretend we're talking to little you. Talking okay. to we're talking to new musicians, okay? We're talking to anybody who's like, "How do I be like you?" You know, how do I? You know, I, I, I really what the question is is, what is one thing that you wish you could tell little you that said, "I want to do that," that hey, buddy, you're gonna need to know about this. Not a warning necessarily. Not uh, just like a good step one, like more like hey. Um, this is going to happen. So, you know, you may want to know about this or even if it's just a piece of advice, uh, don't say change your strings. So other than that, okay. Teach, teach uh, the children's. I'm going to start with one thing. Okay. Practice to a fucking click. Yes. <laughs> Practice to a click from day one. As like, a band. Go, as a whole band. Mm -hmm. um, that's the, the, that would be the first thing yep. um it took me way too long as an adult to come to that understanding and uh once i did my abilities skyrocketed but um other than that like if that's kind of my jokey answer but like if no it's a, that's a real thing man yeah like and so many people just think especially playing like rock music that like it's soulless and like they don't need it and it's like you're going to make that realization one day that you should have been doing it the whole time and every day is a day later than it should have been. So yeah. that's practice wild. to a click. That's wise, like, buddy. Uh, practice to a click. Put in fucking earplugs. Um, okay, those are my basics. Those are my checklists. Right. But I think other than that, like you got to understand that 99% of the time, your first band is not going to be your real band. And yeah. It's, <laughs> and when you're in your first band, you're ready to take on the fucking world. And it, that's your mistake making time. Yes. Let me rephrase. You're right. you're, gonna, you're I'm, I'm still making mistakes. You're you're going to but that's when you realize uh oh, looking back you're going to be like, "Oh wow, if I had only known." Yes. That's when, like, you yep. need to be taking in things like a, like, just like a sponge. And, like, having that first band dissolve, for some people, that's it. Like, that's a wrap, just period for music for them. Because, like, this is something that doesn't really get talked about, like, a lot with, like, the band community. But you really do forge relationships with the people that you're playing in these bands with. So, when, a bands like that dissolves or something gets ugly or you get kicked out. I got kicked out of my first band because I was bad. It feels like getting broken up with four times at once. Yeah. And like that's enough to really kill it for some people. So like I think that if I had to go back in time to say one thing to either myself or younger people is that like just take that 
and just try to apply it to everything. Like you're going to, as an artist in general, you're going to face rejection. You're going to face a thousand no's. Things are not going to work out. And you have to remember you're doing it because you love music. You would be doing it regardless if things went perfect or not. And just, uh, you know, dust yourself off, you know, realize it sucks sometimes and just get back out there. Just keep making mistakes, keep fucking up and then learn to like the process, I guess would be my, my big thing. Agreed. Um, I, I think if you, first of all, very insightful, very, very wise words, 30 year old. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thank but you. Also, if you take that tack on things, you, you, you can't help but temper and humble yourself a little bit, your expectations. Mm -hmm. You, there's no chance for you to be like, I'm the greatest thing ever. I'm, you know, I'm the hottest shit that, you know, they're here to see me. You can't yeah. do that when you realize, well, that was a good night, but, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, you talk to any musician who's been doing it for more than five minutes, you say, great set. Even if they never say it, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, well. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, oh, well, uh, like, Measure 38, I, like, came in, like, a beat, like, right. like, yeah. And, like, I've definitely had nights where people will be like, that was sick. And I'd be like, that was one of the worst sets I've ever played. And the, the trick is, have, whatever, as a, as a group, you need to, like, agree, we're going to have fun on stage. Because that's yes. what, that's what people want to see. They don't want to see, even if it's a, even if it's death metal, even if it's almost dark on stage, you can tell the bands that are really, they're, they're like, Miss, this is the yeah, best, yeah. this is the best thing yeah. ever. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, like, like you know, Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters was all about, you know, you just get, get in the garage and sound like shit for a while. You know, yeah, <laughs> you're, yeah. you're going to, uh, you, you can't help it. You're going to. So and in, one of the, one of the things that I heard when I was in high school because I was in high school, like, band. I was in marching band. Mm -hmm. And the instructor for that had these words that have just stuck with me ever since. And it's, if you can't fix it, feature it. So, Ooh, like, nice. just go all in with the energy. If you're, If it's fucking sloppy, like, just put on a show at the very least. Like, obviously, try not to be sloppy. But, like, if you right. see shit's a little off the rails... Like the benefit, yeah, the benefit that you get by doing it as a live show and not on the record is that they have a visual, personal element that they can connect with that is probably 60% of the show. So yeah. just shits off the rails, make it a good, just make it a good show. Like that's all you got to do. I mean, I say it like it's that simple, but. Right, right. It, it, I couldn't say it any better. And yeah, I mean, I got nothing else. So. Thank you very much for being on the channel. Thank you for watching. Of course. S stick around. We're going to see something <laughs> involving mm -hmm. hate-powered automation, uh, a little virtualization video, and then we'll catch you in the outro. In the meantime, I guess we'll temporarily say goodbye. Temporarily say goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Thank you so much for having me. No worries. See you in a little bit.
I want to thank Dustin Black from Vanta Black for coming on the channel. It was a great interview and a great video. If you want to know more about them, check out the links down in the description, social media links. And if you want to know what I think about hate powered automation, definitely check out my review. And uh, while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. The review is coming. So subscribe and ring the bell and you'll be notified when it posts. Other than that, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you want to subscribe, click over there. You know the bell, you know the deal. And if you want to hear my own music, which is definitely not death metal, click over there. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, Dustin. Goodbye. Thank you so much for having me. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba.